In this video, we're going to cover these learning objectives. So understand the principles of ionic bonding and learn how to name and write the chemical formula of an ionic compound, given the charges on the ions. This is directly related to this uh, science understanding here. So ionic compounds are continuous and are represented by empirical formulae. And we'll talk about what that term means in a moment. So we're going to start off and talk about what ionic bonding is. And this image just gives you a bit of an overview as what, uh, in terms of what ionic bonding is all about. An ionic bond simply is a force of attraction that exists between oppositely charged ions. So you've got positively charged ions called cations, negatively charged ions called anions. They have a strong force of attraction to one another and they're held together within a lattice structure. And we say that ionic bonds form ionic compounds. To recall, keep in mind that metal atoms tend to lose electrons and form cations. Non-metal atoms tend to gain electrons and then they form anions. So really what's happening is that we're getting a transfer of electrons going from the metal to the non-metal to form these op oppositely charged ions. And then these attract one another due to opposite charges. And these are what we refer to as the ionic bonds. Ionic bonds, again, form ionic compounds. So to look at one example, we've got sodium chloride, which is what we find in table salt. And we're just starting off with the original atoms that make up this particular compound. So we've got sodium atoms and uh, chlorine atoms present here. And what we can see is that sodium has one valence electron just here in the third shell. And chlorine has seven valence electrons in the third shell. So what we think could happen is that sodium, the sodium atom can simply donate and give one of its electrons to the chlorine atom. So when it does that, it results in the formation of ions. So sodium forms a sodium ion, chloride, uh, chlorine forms a chloride ion, sodium is positively charged, chloride is negatively charged, so we know that opposites attract, and as a result, we've formed an ionic bond between these two ions. Another example, so magnesium and oxygen atoms, in this case, magnesium has two valence electrons. So that's just these two here in the third shell. And oxygen has two, four, five, six valence electrons in its second shell. So magnesium atoms can effectively donate two of its valence electrons to oxygen so that both end up with a full or stable electron configuration. So when they do that, again, they form ions. Magnesium forms the magnesium ion. It's got a, a two positive charge because it's lost two electrons. Oxide ions are two negative because oxygen has gained two electrons to form this ion. And again, they will form a strong force of attraction due to the opposite charges of the ions. And this is what an ionic bond is. Last one here, just to show you a bit of variation. Calcium has two valence electrons over here in the fourth shell. And we've got two chlorine atoms here, and each one needs one more valence electron. So calcium atoms can actually donate its valence electrons to two individual chlorine atoms. So one goes to that one, the other one goes to that atom there. Again, we end up forming ions of opposite charge. It's just that uh, for every one calcium ion, we have two chloride ions that are formed. And again, these are attracted to one another through ionic bonds. Remember that we can work out the charge of ions given the position of each element in the periodic table. And this is just summarized in this table here. So what we're going to do is learn how to use these ions and their charges to write the formula of an ionic compound. Before we do that though, let's just learn a little bit more about the structure. Remember we, we have said in past videos that ionic compounds have lattice structures. And lattice structures are three-dimensional structures that have regular repeating arrangements. And you can see that clearly in this image of sodium chloride here. You get this alternating of positive and negative ions and you've got this repeating pattern that occurs in a continuous fashion. 
So this is what we refer to as a crystalline structure or a three-dimensional lattice network structure. This shows you the structure of sodium chloride. And what you can see is that this has a quite regular shape. You've got crystals that are cubic in shape, so they form cuboids. And this is going to be the case for, for sodium chloride, no matter what size crystals you end up forming. Essentially, the larger the crystals, the more ions you have in that lattice structure. To talk about empirical formulae, um, this is different to molecules in that uh, empirical formulae don't contain a fixed number of atoms or ions within their structure. And really, the size of the sample determines how many of those ions are present. But what we know is that ionic compounds still have a fixed ratio that uh, we can express. And this is what we call the empirical formula. So it is the simplest whole number ratio of ions that are present in an ionic compound. And it's key that we are defining the simplest whole number ratio. And so when we learn about writing the formula, uh, we are learning about writing the empirical formula. So here's, again, sodium chloride. What we can see is for every one uh, sodium ion, there is one chloride ion. So we would say that there's a ratio of Na plus to Cl minus of 1 to 1. If we want to express this as an empirical formula, we write it as such. For every one sodium ion, there is one chloride ion. And in the empirical formula, we actually leave out the charges because they end up always cancelling out. And we're going to need to learn how to do this. If we have a look at, I guess, the start of how this can occur and just look at how empirical formulae are determined. So starting off with potassium iodide, what we've got is uh, K plus being the cations, the potassium ions, I minus being the iodide ions. We know that this has a ratio of one to one. So its empirical formula is going to represent that as well. Its empirical formula is Ki. Magnesium oxide, slightly different scenario. We've got Mg2 plus ions with O2 minus ions. Again, we still have a ratio of one to one. So its empirical formula is just going to simply be MgO. The next one, calcium chloride. We had a look at this as an example before. It's made up of uh, calcium ions, Ca2 plus and chloride ions, one negative. This has a different ratio. We see that for every one calcium ion, there's going to be two chloride ions. And so its empirical formula is going to represent that as CaCl2. If there is no number, then we assume that it is actually one. So one calcium and two chlorides will help balance this empirical formula. Lithium phosphide, made up of Li plus and P3 minus ions. This has a ratio of three to one. So three lithium ions to one phosphide ion. And so its formula is Li3P. And finally, barium nitride, Ba2 plus, N3 minus. This has a ratio of three to two. And so its empirical formula is going to be Ba3, N2. And keep in mind, this is the simplest whole number ratio of the ions.